Welcome, uh, my name is Tim Campos, my pronouns are he, him. I'm the Associate Vice President here at Art Center in the Admissions Office. Uh, this is a collaborative uh, event with uh, my colleagues in the Center for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. So I'll let my colleague Stephen introduce himself. Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Stephen Butler. Uh, I'm Art Center alumni from film and also the Creative Operations Manager for the Center for DEI, as Tim mentioned. Uh, excited to be here, these talks are always great. I always get a lot of good knowledge and just uh, good stories. So I'm excited for this though. So I'll pass it back to you, Tim. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, in, uh, in this collaborative effort, uh, this particular uh, series is open to both prospective students, uh, students who are thinking about applying to Art Center. Uh, we have a handful of accepted students in the audience, but also our current Art Center students and community. So we have current students with us, uh, probably some Art Center staff and faculty might also be in the audience. If you're with us, hello. I also want to send an additional thank you to the illustration department who's co-sponsoring this event with admissions and Center for DEI, uh, as we're welcoming, welcoming back one of their own uh, alumni uh, for this particular diversity, uh, Dialogues and Diversity and Design speaker series. Um, so just to give you a brief uh, overview of what to expect for uh, today's programming, we will have uh, an overview from our alumni speaker this evening, uh, Jackie Lee. And then we'll also then have a little bit of a Q and A or a little bit of conversation that Jackie and I um, engage in conversation. And then we'll uh, save about 15 minutes or more towards the end of the hour for a Q and A with the audience. And so any questions you have throughout, please feel free to utilize the chat box, ask away. Um, as we get started, I'd love to quickly hear from you all in the chat. Uh, with these types of events, we're, we're far and wide. So we'd love to know where everyone is tuning in from. So maybe if you want to use the chat, let us know uh, what part of the world you're tuning in from. Uh, we are in Pasadena, or at least I am. So it's evening here, but I'm, I understand that, uh, that we might have folks where it's morning, the day, maybe early morning. So if you want to let us know in the chat what part of the world you might be tuning in from, it's always great to know as we kick off this, this session. So spend a quick moment. And thank you, Ricardo from Los Angeles. You, you started us off there. Uh, we have Ellie from Pasadena, Connie from Pasadena, Kevin from Pasadena. I'm assuming some of these are our Art Center students. Jared, hey Jared. Um, yeah, anyone who's saying Pasadena, I'm making the the educated guess that you're uh, you're here at Art Center or somewhere within the vicinity. Lisa and Joshua Tree, Karen in Los Angeles, Claire also in Los Angeles as well. Anyone abroad? Do we have any international folks in the audience? Let's see here. Well, I'm sure uh, more are coming in. So uh, as you let us know, we, we'd love to hear where you're tuning in from. And again, uh, feel free to ask any questions in the chat and we'll get to those questions a little bit later on. But without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over uh, to uh, who you're here to hear from today. And that is our uh, illustration graduate from uh, spring of 2020, Jackie Lee. Uh, Jackie is a phenomenal illustrator and storyteller and I'll let her tell you more about her journey to Marvel Studios, but also she'll probably share with us some of her experience that she's had working at Netflix. Uh, without further ado, uh, Jackie, take it away. Hi everyone. Um, I'm going to share a presentation with you guys, just going over um, just going over my journey basically like why I decided to go to Art Center, then a little bit about the major projects I had at school that really influenced where I ended up after Art Center, and then a little bit about uh, some of my work on intergalactic. So uh, like many of you, I've been drawing my entire life. Um, it was probably like a hobby I always had growing up, something I always enjoyed doing. Um, and my parents were always super supportive. They took they took me to art classes. Um, they let me like they gave me like this laptop and let me like start doing digital art for the first time. Like here, if you guys if any of you guys remember like Okakis, this was me in like I think like sixth or seventh grade drawing on an Okaki back in the day. But um, for me growing up, I didn't really know artists like. Like none of my like my parents weren't really friends with artists and I didn't exactly know what like being a professional artist meant and if it was something you could realistically pursue but um 
I had this really lovely teacher back when I was in seventh grade. She saw me like doodling in class like every day. And she was like, oh my God, I feel like you have so much potential. Let me take you to meet my friend who is an illustrator. So we, so she did that. Like we drove over to like Irvine, I think. And I got to like see his studio. I sadly, I don't remember the name of this illustrator anymore, but I knew he worked like traditionally in a lot of different styles. And at the very end of the trip, I got to like show him some of my work, including this like a uh, very like simple, like Okaki digital art painting. And he was like, I, I really believe you have potential. And I think like you should, you should continue doing what you're doing. And hearing that at the age of like, 13 or so like I think that that really like changed my life like that's when I that's when I really decided like okay this seems like the coolest job ever I want to become a professional artist so basically all throughout high school I was trying to I guess on the one hand continue to make a lot of art for fun like I would just make a lot of like fan art for like stuff I really enjoyed like Marvel shows and like anime and things like that for fun. But I would also try to couple that with doing a lot more observational art. I followed a lot of artists online and I got to see um, a lot of their sketchbook drawings, a lot of like the studies that they would do and I would get inspired to do my own. And I think doing that all throughout high school really put me in a position to like go to Art Center with this really strong skill set. Um, like already having some basics of like knowing some basics of like anatomy and shape design and even like a bit of like perspective and things like that. Like this is uh, more or less what my art looked like at the end of high school. Uh, this is like a lot of like stuff that I made for like AP art and like ske sketchbooks that were very much inspired by people's like Cal art sketchbooks and things like that. And I, I'm a bit, I was like a huge Marvel fan in high school. So a lot of like the fan art that I did for fun that I, I, th I think like I, I honestly put more effort into than some of the stuff that I did for school was like this sort of fan art of like my favorite characters. There's like Namor there and like Daredevil fan art, Hawkeye fan art. Um, and yeah, I think having like using like my passion like for like, like using like my love for like fan art and like pushing myself to make more like elaborate illustrations definitely helped set myself up to for like success at Art Center. So um, I want to transition to talking about like some of like the projects that I did while I was in school that really made a difference. And the first one being this uh, project I did adapting the story of Carmilla. Um, at the time, I had a lot of classes where I was focused on mainly doing layout drawing, and I still wasn't super confident with painting, and I let my professor, Will Weston, know that. Um, I was working at the time with one of my, like, super talented classmates, Amelia Caston, and we both, we were, like, teaming up to make basically what would be, like, our first attempts at, like, a VISDA portfolio. Um, but at the time I was telling my teacher Will Weston like, oh, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm, I, like, I have like almost no confidence doing like really like volumetric paintings in color and stuff like that. And he was like, oh, I think it'd be really cool if you use this approach where you draw a lot of inspiration from black and white films, like, and go from there. So that was super helpful. Like having like, uh, like having, like putting that sort of, putting those sort of like limitations in place so I didn't go like overboard. And at the same time, um, really focusing more on like rendering and, and like learning how to like capture light in really dramatic ways and things like that. And on top of that, um, doing these, like also focusing on set design. Like I said, like I was more comfortable doing drawings before this class, but um, this was like my first time really trying to like paint things out in a more volumetric way. I started out with like the props on the bottom. And then from there, I would like take like my drawings of these like 3D cutaways and turn those into, into volumetric paintings as well. 
And that was a great learning experience. I'm still pretty proud of this project. It's still up, it's like the earliest project still up on my website. And um, I have gotten like some like job opportunities from, from like an art director seeing it and being like, oh, you can do like super dramatic lighting and also like do like detailed line work for backgrounds and things like that, which is really cool. Um, and then after that, uh, this is a project that I did not do at Art Center, but I was I had like a term off and um, I wanted to try out like a brainstorm class. This one was, I think, World Building 3 with Zach Bretz. And for this one, because my previous project, I was mainly focused on interiors and that was more of my comfort zone. I wanted to challenge myself to make more of a, to focus on just the exterior of a set. And also pushing myself to make something that feels like really like epic and grand. So I basically just spent like, I believe like a, like a summer, like really nailing out the details, turning this building set into like from like the flat view into like a, into like a SketchUp model and then like putting it on this mountain and rendering it out. And I ended up with this pretty cool painting that, um, that I'm still pretty proud of to this day. Yeah, it's like I've gotten, like I've, I've gotten a few like job opportunities where people said, basically said like, oh, I could tell from this painting that you can paint like super epic looking like like things on like a grander scale and things that feel very epic. So even though this one is lighter on storytelling, I'm still fairly proud of it for showing that I could do like more detailed sets. And then the next project I want to talk about is actually my grad project, which was Mr. Popper's Penguins. And I started this project um, dur while I was sitting in on Helen Chen's VizDev class. She taught, like I believe, one class a few years ago, very briefly. But I knew I wanted to pick a story that I really that I, re that I felt really strongly about. And Mr. Popper's Penguins was always one of like my childhood favorite stories more or less. And I wanted to, I think for this project in particular, I wanted to emulate a lot of my favorite blue sky paintings like from like Disney and other feature studios where you see a lot of character interaction and like story moments and stuff. I was working on this after, Hel like, after Helen Chen's class, I left with basically these character designs and the house. And um, from there, I started working with Richard Keyes. And Richard Keyes really pushed me to think a lot about the storytelling of, of each scene and push it, like just making these illustrations that had a lot going on in terms of like characters looking like in terms of like capturing the feeling of this penguin family at the start when they're all getting to know each other and getting to like live with each other and figuring out and sort of like of just becoming like a genuine family. And then at the end, like moving into, starting to move to the city, which is what's happening in the last painting. And from, the, and from there, once I got to the second half of the project, I wanted to focus a lot more on the contrast between their more idyllic, like country life at home um, with the, like all this bombastic stuff that's happening in the city and them doing these crazy stage performances where nothing good really comes out of it because they're penguins and <laughs> they shouldn't be up there. And for these, like, I think in hindsight, um, if I was going to do a VISDA portfolio, like for my grad project, I probably should have done something with maybe like a little bit more focus on environments rather than just story moment paintings. But I think for what it's worth, I'm still super proud of how this project came out and like the density of these paintings. Like I know it's not necessarily the most like, feels like the most cinematic. It feels a lot more just like storybook illustration maybe, but, um, I still, I, I'm still super proud of this project. And uh, this project is actually what got me, like what, like how I got hired onto Enter Galactic. Like basically 
Um, my production designer, Rob Ruppel, he found, I think he, I believe he saw my Mr. Popper's Penguins project on, I think like Twitter and Instagram like twice. And from there he was like, oh, wow, I should like, I should like, this is like, this person is super talented. And I feel like she could do a really good job working, working on our show. So yeah, inter like intergalactic was my first job out of school. And I got, I got the, I got hired on there. Like I got the job offer like a few weeks before graduation. And I remember being like, totally like, oh my goodness. Like, I can't believe this is like, this feels like a dream come true getting to work at Netflix on such a cool project, like right out of school. And Originally, what I was hired to do on Intergalactic was I was more of a style artist. So Rob, he had a lot of, he had like artists on the team that were more that of designers. So they would design out like the sets and the buildings. And then there were artists like me who would take their designs and basically repaint them to match our art director, Mikkel's art style. So that's what a lot of what I was doing early on on Intergalactic. And I think it was a really good learning a really good learning experience. Um, and from there, I transitioned into doing more environment paintings for the show. Um, a lot of my environments, I think you don't really see that, like they, they were like in the show, like super briefly, but i um, still proud of how a lot of them came out. And it, it was really cool getting to see uh, it was really cool getting to see my paintings going from these like two, going from just being like 2D flat paintings and then they would, like our vendor studio would project them onto 3D models and that's how you got, the, that's how the look of the show is like so accurate to the concept paintings. Um, and then another big part of what I did on Intergalactic was I helped Rob out with lighting keys. We worked super closely on these. I did many, many lighting keys for many, many scenes. Um, probably, I think I was literally, I was, I was working on these for, I believe about maybe like a year, a year or so maybe. Uh, but yeah, he would give me a lot of pointers on how he wanted like the shadows to fall on the faces and like where like rim lights should be and stuff like that. And from there I would paint things out. And what's special about Intergalactic is that because um, the sets were 3D projected from the concept paintings, basically I like a lot of my job would just be to match the characters colors to those concept paintings. So, um, it wasn't as, I guess it, it didn't require, like, it didn't require as much, like, crazy thinking as, like, you might expect, but um, I still learned a lot about staging and light and, like, light direction and pushing things, like, forward and backward and pushing characters, like, forward and backward in a scene and things like that. Um, and I feel like doing, getting to do the lighting keys and getting to see how the scenes play out in the final film is super satisfying. Um, I'm, I'm super proud of the work that I did there. And I think the, the team over at DNEG did such an incredible job, like staying faithful to what Rob, what Rob and I like planned out for, for the lighting. Um, so base, so after, and yeah, so after Intergalactic, um, I moved over to Marvel. Um, I'm currently working on both What If and Marvel Zombies. Um, and also while towards the end of Intergalactic, I also was putting a lot more time into um, more of like more of personal art and doing things like drawing in sketchbooks and doing life drawing and doing plein air painting that I hadn't really done um, in quite some time, like not really since like art center and early college days really. And I think what's really cool about, about these like sketchbook pages in particular is I remember um, like my, like the, the, like when I was being interviewed for, for what if they were 
like uh, our production designer Paula saying like looked at the like the sketchbook like my sketchbook drawings and he was like oh like I can tell from these that you can like I like I can trust that you'll be able to like design stuff for our show because these read super well and you've obviously put a lot of thought into like the shape the shapes and things like that and I think that's I think that's super that's definitely that was all that was like super cool to hear because I think when I was in college I was always really self conscious about putting any sort of unfinished art on my portfolio page, like everything from, like everything that you can see from like my Mr. Popper's Penguins project and the Carmela project is like the most like polished, clean, uh, immaculate paintings you can imagine. But I do think there's a lot of value in showing more of like the early stages of your work and more of like your thought process behind, like more of like how you can think on the fly and things like that. Um, and yeah, it's been, it's also been super satisfying taking what I've learned from Intergalactic and Marvel and putting it into my personal work again. I don't always have the most time or energy to make personal paintings, but I'm really, I feel like after leaving Art Center, um, instead of like trying to, I guess, make paintings that I feel like would get me like, like hired at like Disney or something like that. I'm doing a lot more paintings that just explore techniques that I'm really interested in, like using a lot more like textured brushwork and custom shapes and things like that. And um, soup, like, and yeah, I think I like right now I don't have, right now I, 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 do, I don't have like the most time to put, to be putting to, make personal art at the moment, but I really hope I can get back into it soon um, and sort of like continue my artistic growth that way and seeing where like the directions my art turn like will take next. And uh, yeah, uh, that's that base that's concludes my talk. So thank you. Thanks, Jackie. And I know um, I know some folks uh, joined us late. There were some issues uh, with the link, but I think that's been resolved. And so if you did join us late, not to worry, as you notice coming into the session, it is being recorded and we'll make sure that everybody has uh, a link to the session from the very beginning. So just in case you missed the first 10 minutes or so, um, I think we have you covered. So we'll we'll make sure if you, um, at least on my side with uh, prospective students, if you had any issues uh, joining the session, you'll uh, be sent a link to the recording. So not to worry there. Well, thanks again, Jackie, for taking us through. Um, I wanted to uh, to spend just a couple of minutes, uh, you and I just having a conversation as kind of we continue building upon uh, what you walked us through, which was a beautiful uh, presentation of uh, a nice mix of your work prior to Art Center, during Art Center, and in, and then some of the uh, the post Art Center stuff in terms of uh, the work you're able to share from your time at Netflix working on Intergalactic and. As Jackie and I were chatting earlier, as much as I ask, I know she cannot share anything from Marvel. Uh, I'm not a Marvel nerd or anything, if you, if you can't tell from my office. Uh, and I'm sure some of you would be at, equally as excited to hear more about that. Uh, but we'll, we'll, um, we'll chat more about your, your, uh, your professional career, but just taking some time to kind of revisit um, what you presented to us earlier. I'm always excited to hear about, you know, what was your journey to arts? And I know you talked about that a bit, but uh, even diving a little deeper into it, um, just knowing that we have some students either that are thinking about Art Center or even our current students and trying to like find those moments of inspiration as well. So uh, for you, as you think back to what it was like for you when you were thinking about like, okay, I know that I'm doing this. You, you talked a lot about like what you were doing uh, in preparing your portfolio, but just in general, like what was like a solidifying uh, decision or reason why you, you decided like, okay, this is definitely what I want to do. Did you feel that you had the support from your family? I know that's also a conversation that comes up quite often is like, you know, um, did you have those those moments of, of understanding what it is that you want to do, but also feeling that you had the support to do so? Sorry, that was a very long question. Oh, no, it's totally fine. But yeah, I think uh, I would say that well, while I was in high school, I followed a lot of artists that like what like when I was like a freshman, for instance, like I was like following them online and they had like just started their journey at Art Center. Um, and I think getting to see their work grow and change and become like seeing them grow tech like 
technically was super inspiring to see. And I knew I wanted to go to a school that had like a more rigorous curriculum where I could get stronger technical skills. I, I don't think I necessarily knew that I wanted to become like, like a visitive artist at the time. Like I didn't have like a full grasp of what that role meant exactly, but I knew I wanted to like get a better handle at perspective and anatomy and just like become just and illustration techniques in general. So Art Center seemed like a pretty natural choice for me. And also like I had a, like I have a sibling that went to Art Center. They, so I already sort of, so also from there, like I got to, like I, I even had like a summer where I was living with my sibling and then they like, they they like snuck me into some of like the figure drawing, like set, like <laughs> uh, workshops and things like that. So I could work on my college apps at Art Center. <laughs> So um, I guess that was that was a little bit of an of an easier insight. That yeah, you, you had a, a yeah. connection that way too. Um, and, and so, yeah, my parents basically kind of knew what to expect. Like I think at first they were a little like, "Oh, are you are you sure you also want to go to art school?" Like you know, I think I think it's natural for parents to be a little like worried at first, but they they definitely warmed up to it over time. They've been super supportive ever since. That's great. No, I, I like asking that question because I know. Um, all students, you know, those that are creatives, they may not always have that same, you know, uh, positive support as well. So I think it's always great just to hear, like, uh, what, whether someone has that support or not, just to know where you're, where you're pulling those moments to, to keep you going, uh, the inspiration. And yeah, it sounds like uh, you pretty much described what I like, how I like to describe our illustration program. And it's a very uh, uh, prominent program in Art Center, and there's a lot that you can do with the background illustration. But based on uh, what you described too, I think it's how I like to describe the program, which is illustration is great for those who love to draw and tell stories. You may not know specifically that you wanna be a vis dev artist or that you want to paint or that you wanna do surface work, but you know that you love to draw and you love to tell stories and you probably are living in a sketchbook as we, we also noticed from from your, um, your early works that you share with us too. And so um, if that's some of you tuning in, maybe you might find a, a pathway in our illustration program. Uh, as well. Um, so then you get to Art Center. Uh, what were, I mean, I'm sure there's many uh, examples, but can you identify maybe like a pivotal moment at Art Center or you just like, either it could be a faculty member, it could be a class, it could be a project, but there was, was there one uh, pivotal moment for you at Art Center? And again, I'm sure there's many. Uh, um, like I said earlier, like when I first started at Art Center, like I wasn't totally sure like the exact kind of like illustrator that I wanted to be like if I wanted to go like a more like do more like traditional illustration or if I wanted to focus mostly on entertainment I definitely was leaning more towards entertainment but I think what really like made me decide firmly like okay I want to pursue this path of becoming more of like a visit artist was like when I started taking classes with Will Weston and he um I saw saw a lot of potential in me and pushed me super hard like always giving me like feedback on what to improve on and artists to look at for inspiration and even like giving me the opportunity to like go to like talk with like Celine at like DreamWorks and like some of her friends who were there too and like getting lunch with them like with my friend Amelia and I got to see like oh my gosh this is like the work that a visitive artist really does like and I think, I think once I got a clearer picture of that, that was when I was like, okay, this is definitely the path that I want to go down. And I'm going to dedicate as much of this, as much of my studies as I can to honing my skills and matching my art to a professional level. Yeah. And that's, and that's Celine Kim, our illustration alumni was at, who was at DreamWorks uh, Animation and now yeah. currently is at Sony Pictures Animation, I believe. Yeah. And some stints in between there too. Um, uh, in regards to uh, to the the time at Art Center as well, another question that I always love to ask anyone who's made their way through any of our programs here is: I I, th I like to say that Art Center is a really great place for anyone. Of course, whatever program they're in, they've identified that. Uh, but it's a great place for anyone who identifies that they're open to uh, relearning a skill that maybe they thought they had, you know, they had pinned down. So I think the best the best students at Art Center are those that are open to that. They're open to uh, maybe unlearn a bad habit 
I think everyone comes comes at whatever program they're in from a particular perspective. And you might be, you know, great at what you do. And and but I think coming into the classroom environment again, no matter the, the discipline here, uh, being open to either unlearning a bad habit or just looking at doing something differently than maybe you you were uh, accustomed to prior. Did you notice anything within your own skill? And again, you had a, a beautiful hand skill set coming in, into the program already. But even within that, did you identify anything within your own like technical skills and abilities that you're like, huh? And maybe you had that that moment to a realization that you were learning, relearning to do something that maybe you thought coming into it, you already had down? Oh man, I feel like for me, it's definitely painting. Like I had, like, I think, like I did paintings back in high school, but it was a lot, like I painted a lot with gouache and I think my skills were a lot more set with like doing like lineless work, but not necessarily like volumetric painting. So like when I got to Art Center, that's when I realized like, oh my God, like this is like kind of like an entire skill set that I really don't have and have, like I, like I did like, I would do like studies and stuff like in high school but I didn't really have like a grasp of like okay this is like how shadows actually work like like mid-tone tone like your mid-tones or core shadows drop shadows like things like that and I it did take a while for me to to really get comfortable painting again and doing more like illustrative paintings especially like there's like so much going on you so much to juggle with lighting and composition on top of just like trying to paint things competently. <laughs> um, I think I grew into that a lot more after like the Carmilla project that I showed earlier, like getting more comfortable just painting in black and white and doing like more technical prop paintings. And also with Richard Key's color and story class where you do a lot more um, store like story moment paintings, yeah. And if, if we, you know, jumping off that to, you know, go through, we talked about pivotal moments, we talked about moments of, of uh, realization as well, and, and, and understanding you know, ways in which you're also growing and evolving as an artist, as a storyteller. Um, so, you know, fast forwarding even a little bit, you know, quicker through the program and, and you know, graduating, now talking a little bit about some of your experience thus far uh, working in the industry and, you know, you share with us being able to, to have an understanding of kind of where things were looking for you in terms of a career um, uh, pretty immediately post Art Center, which is not uncommon. I mean, I, I feel like there's a lot of stories and examples of, of that out there as well, but um, getting there to that point, um, maybe you could talk a little bit about um, were there any were there any particular resources at Art Center outside of your course of study, but in terms of career development or, or career resources and planning, anything that really helped you kind of place you in that trajectory of, of being able to obtain your, you know, your first creative career right outside of, of, of Art Center? Um, I would say that I think building connections with your professors is really important. Like I, like in the case of like me with Will Weston, um, he actually did sort of say like, right as I was about to graduate, he, I think he recommended me for this other job um, over at Nickelodeon that one of his like old students like was like looking for people to hire and things and um but I, I eventually I had to turn it down because I'd already taken intergalactic but um I do like I have I do have friends who they've also like gotten connect like gotten like work connections from people from like old professors that they that they had like good experiences with and who remembered them and remembered like how strong their work was so um, I think that's like if I would focus on anything at Art Center, I think I would like focus the most on like doing the best work that you can in your classes to to yeah just stand out and like if, when your professors look back on you, they can be like, oh, I remember so and so they like they had such strong painting shots, and like I think they might be perfect for this job that someone's looking for. Sure. So the the be uh, be be friendly, be cordial. Be a, a, yesterday we had a session. And one of our students said, "Just be a good human." Exactly, <laughs> and it, go, it yeah. goes a long way. Exactly, both, you know, inside, outside the classroom, professionally as well. Um, so, so uh, jumping into the the work, the amazing work you've been able to contribute towards intergalactic. 
uh, you know, and, and given the, the, this particular series focus on, you know, dialogues, diversity and design, I wonder if maybe you can share maybe uh, your take on the importance and, and impact on working on such, uh, such um, features or, or, you know, animation, be it whatever the case may be, just working on anything entertainment related, you know, but the importance of diverse storytelling and maybe how you see your role in that either through your own personal projects that you've done, the work you've done through the Art Center, but also uh, some of the experience you've been able to have professionally now. Maybe you can talk about that. Like, where do you, how do you find that you can contribute in that regard to just, you know, more diverse storytelling through entertainment? Um, yeah, I would say like Intergalactic is so special. Like, I, I, I don't think it really, like it necessarily like hit me at the time, like, just how special this project was until like I got to see it like fully animated and out in the world and getting to see like oh my gosh this is like like an adult animation like romance story with like between like two black characters and having like I guess getting to spend so much time like putting so much like care and attention into stuff like doing like like all the lighting keys with the characters making sure like I was like looking at like a lot of reference to make sure like I was painting like black skin tones accurately and making sure like the lighting felt like very um very like like looking at like a lot of, a lot of reference from like movies and shows with like black characters to make sure that all the to make sure that it felt like true and authentic authentic yeah sorry yeah. <laughs> um so like I feel like when like when you work on like a like a really diverse like a re like a really diverse project with a lot of like diverse characters, I do think putting a, a lot of like care and attention into stuff like that is super important because you know I think it really pays off at the end when people like watch the show and they're like, oh my god, these characters are like beautiful, like you know all the like the lighting and stuff on them looks like stunning, and I think I think getting to make an impact in even just a small way like that is like super satisfying and getting to work on something that's like so beautiful and with like protagonists that you don't necessarily see a lot in like American animated shows that are focused mostly on like uh, kids and things like that. Yeah, and I think I think we're seeing more and more examples of that play out in animation and, and you know, uh, live action feature films as well, just, you know, uh, television shows, just more, you know, diverse storytelling and representing, you know, communities that maybe sometimes didn't feel like they were being seen in, in that particular regard. And so it's, it is a beautiful thing to have, you know, shows and things that you're able to see you've worked on too, like Intergalactic, or I know you're at Marvel Studios and you necessarily work on like, you know, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, but that's also something that's definitely uh, more current that folks are talking about with even just the portrayal and representation in a, in a cinematic story of, of that nature, highlighting, you know, different lived experiences and, and having folks see themselves represented in characters. So it's exciting to, you know, to know that even like you said, if, even if it's a small piece that you're contributing, whatever the case may be, that you're, you're part of that, that uh, authentic storytelling that's, that's, you know, um, allowing folks to feel seen in the characters and, you know, what better way through, you know, either animation or other, uh, other forms of storytelling as well. Well, we're at uh, about the uh, the twenty minutes prior to to the hour. I think it's a good uh, a good segue into maybe going into our moderated uh, Q and A. And Stephen will will take some. We've I've been looking at it. We have quite a few questions for you, and so uh, Stephen will uh, will take it from there. And then any questions that you all have, I also noticed there's a couple of questions that might be more relevant to someone thinking about one of our programs or on that side. I'm I'm happy to take those questions, but. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll bring Steven into the mix and uh, Adam here as well. And we'll, uh, we'll take your questions. So keep them coming. You can ask them in the Q and A, or um, you can also ask your questions live by virtually raising your hand. All right, thanks, Tim. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to this, these questions in the chat and I'll try to go through them in order. And uh, if there's any repeats or if uh, Jackie's already answered something, I'll, I may skip. So it's not anything personal. Um, <laughs> Let's see, let's let's get started. So, all right, so James asked, uh, any portfolio advice for a graduate struggling to break into animation uh, slash visual development? Oh gosh. Um, I, I feel like it's hard for me to really give like a ton of advice on this because I've only had like 
two jobs and one of them like I, I feel like so I feel like like I have like a pretty diverse portfolio in terms of the different like projects that like are in it. Like I have one that again is more feels more like horror theme, and then another project that's like more fantasy, and then another project that's like my Mr. Popper's Penguins project. So, um, and I've gotten good feed. I've gotten like good feedback on like like I've gotten like different people responding to each one of those projects, and I've gotten opportunities like from each one of those. Um, but I feel like if you like if you are struggling um, and you feel like really unmotivated, what I might do is just, I guess, take stock of what you like what's already in your portfolio and like maybe focus focus in on like I it's tough for Vizda because I feel like. Like if you want to do like Vista for TV, for instance, there are ways you can sort of like package your portfolio and to 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 show people that like oh I can do like these like really detailed like prop paintings and like there are a lot there are like a lot of resources online you can look into that have a lot of that should that have a lot of like detailed insight into how like the industry expects you to like packet things and like doing like orthos and things like that. But I think it's also important just to keep trying to find ways to make work that you genuinely like get excited about. Cause I feel like, I feel like people res respond pretty positively to that when they can tell like, oh, this is, a, this is like, a, like this person's working on like a story that really means a lot to them. And they want to like portray these story moments like really beautifully, even if it's not necessarily like like I would, yeah, I would try to find a balance between what you think, like, I guess more like industry heavy um, pieces, like more technical stuff, like set design and prop, and like prop design and things like that. But also like throwing in stuff that genuine that you get genuinely excited about painting and that genuinely makes you like happy to work on. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's um, it's putting a balance between what uh, industry might be looking for, and then your and making sure it's your passion that you're putting on the uh, yeah, on the screen or on the paper. Yeah. Okay, let's let's that's a great answer. Uh, let's move on. Uh, Dr. Mel, uh, as one of our DI creativists, is asking. Uh, okay, Sister Jackie, you are a beast, but I wonder how you give back. You talked about how uh, the critical exposure you got from a seventh grade teacher. So I want to know what you are doing to make a pathway for the next Jackie Lee, um, who is now who is now like you, who can draw uh, but doesn't know what they can, uh, how they it, doesn't know that they can have a career like you have. Yeah, it's good. It's a good question. Giving back and oh, yeah, that yeah. next step. I definitely want in the future to like, like I think right now I like, like I've gotten offers to perhaps like host workshops or to like maybe like do like online teaching and things like that and I think right now I, I I'm still I still feel like I'm so like fresh to the industry and like I honestly there's a lot of stuff that I still feel like I don't feel comfortable giving advice on um <laughs> but I definitely want to grow into that and find ways to like maybe do like more like personal mentorships with students or like trying to maybe ease my way into like into teaching or um or like even smaller smaller stuff like like final like finally like doing workshops and things like that but like I I would like to like to find ways to like encourage and inspire more people for sure and I think like I just want to like still build a little bit more self-confidence before I hop into that first but well, if I may add, yeah. Jackie, I think you being here with us this, this evening for prospective students, current students, that in itself is like, you know, tons of inspiration for folks hearing your trajectory and journey. And, you know, uh, so I, I think I think you're on that track. You don't have to you don't always have to dedicate your time to like, you know, all those additional things between your busy day to day. So, again, that's why we're gracious that you're with us today. Just, you know, for the hour sharing some of that, because that in itself is, is a form of inspiration. 100%. Yeah. And that's always going to say the same thing, Tim. Uh, yeah, this is the I mean, I feel I struggle with this too. Sometimes I think, oh, I don't want to give people certain types of advice. 
you want to steer them the wrong way. But uh, it's just giving back in any way you can is always a, a good first step. Yeah. That's my that's my two cents. Oh, okay, yeah. so so let's move on. Um, see, I, we heard from James already, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Alice. Uh, Alice, Alice is asking, how has your relationship with art changed over the years, from when you started making art just for enjoyment to now? Having worked for uh, many large studios, what do you do to sustain your love for curiosity, curiosity and art? Oh man, it's it's really hard. Um, I I know a lot of people who like I know. It's I think once you become a professional artist, it's definitely really like really different. And I've struggled a lot with um, finding like still like trying to like ungroup the expectations I have for myself. Like, cause like, you know, when you're on the job, like, like there's definitely like uh, expectations that you need to hit in terms of like the quality of work that you turn in and the style that you work in and stuff like that. And I think, I think it's really hard. Like once your work day ends and you you want to try to like make something like make art for yourself and you still kind of have those expectations expectations like rattling in your brain like I know I struggle a lot with that like I make a lot of personal art that never sees the light of day because I'm like oh my god this is like <laughs> uh this is like ugh, so bad but um I, I think lately for me like I've been trying to to do more like like I guess go back to my roots of like when I was like a kid and I would just like literally just like sit in the restaurant while my parents while we were like waiting for food and stuff and just like draw like the inside of the restaurant and people like sitting at the tables and things like that and I think for me it's been really satisfying going back and doing more like non-committal really loose really like like ink drawings that I would never post online like I have no urge to really but it helps loosen me up it gets me like except like it gets me like a little, like a little light excited about drawing again, just keep, just trying to keep things loose. And like, if you need to take a break from doing like personal paintings and stuff, I definitely recommend it. Like I haven't really been doing a lot of like, like personal illustration work for like a few months now because I've been so busy with freelance and also the stuff at Marvel. Um, so yeah, I would say just, uh, like it will, like your relationship to art really does change and it's it's pretty unfortunate, but I feel like if you can find ways to relieve yourself of those expectations that you get from working in the industry, uh, if you can find little ways to do that, whether it's plein air painting, whether it's finding, whether it's like working in a different medium, uh, so on and so forth, I think that's that's been helpful for me. I hope it can be helpful for you too. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. It's it's finding uh, uh, other pathways into your art that maybe you haven't tried before, and then also just going back to what you love the most about about it from the very beginning, and just doing yeah. those things. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, Tani is asking, uh, what what was the most important thing you've learned from being in the industry uh, for so long, or I guess thus far, really? This far. Yeah. The most important thing I've learned. Um. I guess it's that um, I I think it's just that people are like so much like 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 just that people in the industry are in general just so nice and way like way nicer than you would ever expect and um, I think. Like I personally, like while I was in school, I struggled a lot with just feeling like I was never like really like good enough or that I could like, there was always something I could like improve on. And I, I just generally had like a very low like opinion of my own art. And uh, just like, I struggled a lot with seeing like my own self-worth and things like that. But I feel like once I got into the industry and I got to hear from people like, from like my art directors and my production designers, like, this is like really great. Like, you know, like, sure you can like, like there are like a few, like, you know, obviously you're gonna have notes and things like that, but I feel like people are, people are genuinely like so appreciative of the work that you put in. And 
like so like so nice about giving feedback and things like that so it's it's made me like really grateful to get to work in this industry for sure like i've had like yeah. very good experiences i it might not it might not be the same for like everyone but um every ex like the both both teams i've been on so far have been like really lovely yeah that's great and i and i think that um the you sharing the i guess vulnerable moments of like not having the, the, the self-confidence sometimes as everyone struggles. I think every artist struggles with that concept, you know, so um, it's good to hear someone that's doing it, like say the same thing. Uh, let's see, let's move on to the next question. Uh, Jisoo uh, is asking, I read that you can choose, like, you can choose more focus. Oh, this is a, I guess it's art center question, but I'll ask you um, anyways. Uh, I read you that can choose more focused major after six months if you are an illustration major. Can you give us more info on how that process works and how it benefited you? I guess going into your, your how you focused on whatever, like, you know. Um, Just like, choose, like, is it like this about like choosing tracks basically? Yeah, 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 basically, so yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, tracks, yeah. I think so I'm hearing too. So maybe you can talk about like, um, as you became an illustration student with us, how you were able through the department to be exposed to different curricular offerings that then led you to to uh to pursuing entertainment arts mm, okay yeah i think for for me i i was definitely like a little like a bit undecided for a bit longer like i took the like or yeah i feel i feel like once i was finished with most of my foundation classes and i got to like like for instance i took like like two different, two very different types of figure drawing classes. Like one was like drawing for illustration with Gail Donahue, and the other was um, Will Weston's um, figure drawing class. And those, like I, Gail's, is much more geared towards like tr traditional illustration. You do a lot of like pen and ink stuff. And that class is was really, I I really loved that class, but um, I think like after I took it, I realized like. I can see myself maybe doing like ink work as something like for fun and something that like maybe to explore like with my, my personal art um, if I if I want to, but I felt much more drawn towards like the approach that I learned in Will Weston's class of more like uh, of like doing like these like volumetric figure studies to like really get better at like character drawing and um and using it as more of a tool for like furthering like furthering like your like your drawing abilities for like a more like entertainment arts track so I, I do appreciate that at art center that like, there's like some like flexibility in the classes that you can take I like I would recommend like like I think it is nice to experiment a bit and see like because you never know like what classes like what lessons in different classes will stick out to you but I think if you are like dead set like okay like I'm entering this school because I want to be a visitive artist and you you know that like deep in your heart, I guess. I don't think there's any shame in just jumping straight in and taking as many like found as many foundation classes relevant to that track as possible. Yeah, so, solid adv advice, I'd say. Uh, okay, let's, I'll try to go a little bit faster um, with the questions. Uh, Jessica is asking, how much time do you try to spend on your super polished paintings versus your paintings that you do for yourself? Oh boy. Uh like super like if I tried to even think about how much time like my super polished paintings for Art Center took, like all the Mr. Popper Sanquins ones, like oh man, I like I would spend like maybe like some of them, like I think literally one of them, like the one with like the city, the establishing shot of the city, I think took like a month. It was brutal. Um <laughs> it's and then for my personal work, it, it, it can really depend too. I think if I'm trying to do more speed painting stuff, I try to finish it maybe within like one or two days. So perhaps like maybe like, even then it's still, I think like maybe like eight to 12 hours. And then stuff like the, like the city painting that's like on like, like the city painting, like I can also put just as much time into that as into like like a month's worth of work outside of like work to to try to finish those so um depends on my mood if i'm up to it but yeah 
Fair enough. So there's not really any rule <laughs> rule to uh, the time spent. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's move on. Catherine's asking, what is a typical work day in your life like? Okay, so um, I usually try try to wake up at around like like 8.30 or so. I would still work from home, so I don't have to worry about getting ready or to do a commute or anything like that. So really grateful for that. And then from, I think, like I, I usually just, just do like, like my work from like nine to 1230-ish, you take like an hour lunch break, then you continue to work from like 1230 to about like six or so. Um, I might have meetings with my art directors or the production designer, um, depending on, it really depends on um, if I turned in work like the previous day maybe, and they've gotten back to me with notes. Um, on Enter Galactic, it was like pretty, it was pretty unique the way, uh, like, I think the way like our team was set up where basically my only point of communication was with our production designer, Rob Ruppel. And then like, he was just like, message me any updates that you have. And then like, like usually like he would just message me almost any time of day and be like, hey, like, do you want, like, like, are you, can I give you notes like right now? And I just feel like, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, once I, once I reach the end of the day, I'll, I, at like 6 p.m., I'll make dinner. And then lately I've been doing freelance after work. So I might be, do, I might do freelance from maybe about like seven, like eight, p.m. to 11 p.m. and then like I'm a bit of a late sleeper so I'll, I, I usually just like goof off um, on the computer until like maybe like midnight or a bit after that and then I'll go to sleep. <laughs> Sounds like a solid day. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of creativity and, and fun so okay I'm gonna keep going with these questions. Uh, we already heard from Tani so I'll go to Karen. Uh, Karen's asking Oh, what, what do you see yourself doing in 30 years? That's a, that's a doozy of a question. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, where do I see myself in 30 years? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I, I, I hope that our jobs will still be around in 30 years with, I don't know, with all, with everything new that's happening with like AI and all that, like, I, I kind I I would hope that I could still be like a biz of artist in 30 years um if if we're still all like making movies or if we're just like doing like doing something else then, <laughs> by then but I would hope that artistic careers would still be very important like maybe I would it would be cool to to try to have like play like a bigger role in design maybe become like an art director maybe become like a production designer or even just like an art director, but uh, I definitely feel like I still have like so much to grow and learn in terms of like be becoming like a leader and trying to build up those skills first. But I guess 30 years is probably enough time for that, I would hope. <laughs> yeah, you, you might be getting some, some Oscars and stuff by, by, by oh, that. I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta uh, dream big, right? That's why, that's why we came to Art Center. That's the whole point. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's let's move on to uh, Juan He's asking a question that you probably can't answer, but I'll ask it anyways. Uh, your art style is amazing. Did you work on Spider Man into the Spider Verse movie? <laughs> because your art, uh, your work reminds me of that. And you're are you currently working on the second film by chance for with Marvel? Oh, uh, I wish that was, <laughs> but sadly no. I I I didn't. I was still like pretty only like like still a little ways in school when Spider-Verse came out. So like, I, like, I think if I had done Vista for, I probably would have been like, you know, like in high school or something. It was like, but yeah, uh, I would hope like, if I ever get the chance to work on something like Spider-Verse, I would probably jump on it in a second. Um, but I think it's, it, it is fair to say my current art style is like fairly inspired by a lot of like, this like Vista artists that work on Spider-Verse and all that. Great answer. So basically, you are working on it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> um, 
Okay, let's uh, let's move on. Uh, uh, Diwa 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 uh, is asking. Let's see, as a, as an artist on my own path with illustration and sequential art, would I benefit more from the social and professional connections made during my time at Art Center, or the actual skills being learned while my talent and power grows? Ooh. So yeah, that's a, that's an interesting question. While your talent and power grows, well, it will definitely your talent and power will definitely continue to grow at Art Center. Like, there's no doubt about that. I think if you are really diligent about putting the, like putting the hours in that your, that your professors expect, it just happens almost naturally. But yeah, I feel like the connections really, like not necessarily just with your professors, but even just with your peers, because, you know, now a lot of the peers I have at Art Center, they, like we've all scattered into like, different area like different animated shows different parts of the like the animation industry um like my current job on what if like my friend like my, my friend Joel actually recommended me for it because he was really good friend he was like pretty good friends with the art director um so like I think like and I feel like when you're out when you're at Art Center like I think because like expectations are running so high and everyone's like everyone's just like oh my god I I don't know if like just like I feel like you bond a lot over just like this like the sheer amount of work that you have to do for classes and um everyone's like own like different insecurities and things like that and when you like when you can be there for people and support people and let people know that like hey like I really believe in you and I feel like you're going to do great work then um I feel like it's it's only natural for like later on in life to be like oh my god like you ended up somewhere like like I can't believe we all ended up like in all these cool places and things like that. Great, thank great answer. Uh, uh, so Tim, it's we're uh, I think we're past seven already. So yeah, we, we probably have time for yeah one more one more question. Um, yeah, I think I think the next one is a great question from Julia. Okay, let's let's go to that one. Okay, so uh, Julian, Ju, uh, Julia is asking, uh, as someone with lots of experience in the industry, have you or anybody else you knew found difficult found difficulty switching between specialties from project to project? Like, say, if you started at a as a background art in one project and decided to do character art in, in the next, would that be difficult? Thanks, by the way, your art is amazing. Yeah, I feel like if you had to jump from doing background art to character, it's almost like two completely different skill sets. Definitely, um, they were they would require like very different portfolios for sure. Like you would have to take like if you already had a BG design portfolio and you wanted to pivot, you probably have to like take time like take the time to build an entirely new character portfolio. But like it, I. I think like if I can like if I can talk a little bit about like my personal experience with this like for instance like on Enter Galactic um, I would say my my role there was definitely more of just being like a painter it was less about like like my design like like getting to do designs and my strength in designing than it was about like my strength as a painter and uh, getting to translate other people's designs into the style and so when I hopped on to like what if and Marvel Zombies, it became a lot more about being more of a generalist and doing stuff, doing design work alongside painting. And at first I was like really uh, self-conscious about like, I was like, oh my God, I feel like I'm not, I'm like not a super creative person. I don't know how I feel about having to do designs and all that, but um, I was lucky to have really like supportive, like leadership on, on my show. Like my art director, Cynthia, she was like, so encouraging like even when I turned in some like really weird like so like even when my designs like weren't the like didn't necessarily like fit in with like what they needed she was all she would always be like hey like you know these are the things you can do to like you know you, you just need to make like xyz changes and you should be all good and I think after a few months now I do feel like a lot more comfortable with the with the design side of things along with the paint side of things so um like that's like not as big of a jump as if you wanted to do like go from background to character but hopefully still still relevant if you need to like switch up roles a bit or things like that 
I, uh, I have a great answer. Um, I, I, yeah, I think that's it's it's essentially like when you what you do at Art Center. It's like you build your portfolio up to um, to get the the gig that you want. And if you want to change gigs, you gotta build it up a little bit more. So yeah, yeah. Um, so is that our time, Tim? Yes, but I'm gonna sneak in a a, a question to, <laughs> okay. to Jackie as well. Uh, so Jackie, obviously prior to coming to Art Center, you talked about you know how you were just already just a fan of like Marvel and whatnot, and that was also uh, influencing the work you were doing at that time. And so for you to come full circle and be working at Marvel Studios, and for you know uh, any of you tuning in who are fans of the MCU, if you were to be able to go back in time, um, kind of you know maybe you have the gauntlet and you can use the time stone to go back in time. But if you were able to either do, it doesn't necessarily have to be the role that you have right now with Marvel Studios, but like any, uh, any Viz Dev role, anything, you know, in that regard, art direction, whatever the case may be. But if you're able to work on any previous MCU uh, feature film, or even throw in the Disney Plus shows as well, anything other than what you're currently working on, what would it be? Oh man. I know it's a loaded. There's like, there's like what, like twenty. I lost count at this point how many properties, how many like <laughs> between the films and the TV shows. But like, yeah, if you could work on anything from the past uh, or that just had come out again that you hadn't worked on, what would it be? Well, maybe, maybe the Ms. Marvel show. I, I had great memories reading Kamala Khan's comics, like when they were first coming out, like back when I was in high school. And I feel like if past me knew that there would someday be like a Ms. Marvel TV show, she would like be like, oh my God, I can't, I can't believe it. Like it feels like uh that and also to just work on like a like a show about like a like a teen like the experiences of like a teenage girl and stuff like that, I feel like would be like awesome. Like I'd love to like work on like a project like that in the future someday. Yeah, that is I will take that as, as someone who also appreciated that show. Uh I, I think it's a powerful show. We talked earlier, I asked you the question about like diverse storytelling and whatnot. I think that's a, a one of many examples of how we're able to see other, um, you know, different types of characters and stories being shared from different lived experiences and what better way than a young high school girl of Muslim background who's able to share her experiences as well and and and, and be a superhero. So exactly. Yes, exactly. that is that is a really a great response. And again, I'm sure there's other ones that you can choose as well because there, <laughs> there's so many to choose from, but that about does it on time. Uh, Thank you, Jackie, for being with us and taking time out of, as you outlined, you're a day in the life of, um, and I, we know you're also working on other things too. So we appreciate you being with us. Uh, thank you, Stephen, for moderating and just the Center for Diversity, Equity, Inclusion. Uh, and I know Ann Field was with us earlier, our illustration department chair. Thank you to the illustration department for co-sponsoring. And thank all of you for tuning in. Um, whether you're thinking about applying to Art Center, you're a current student with us, uh, other me member of our community, faculty or staff, and you're tuning in, uh, we hope uh, you took some inspiration from from Jackie's Jackie's conversation with us. Any any last minute uh, remarks, Jackie, Stephen, Jackie? Uh, it was it was great chatting with you guys. Like I'm like this is my first time ever really doing a talk like this. So apologies if I was like super nervous at the start, but um, you were fine. <laughs> it was it was great getting to getting to just. Uh, I guess reflect a bit about my time at Art Center because I, I don't think I've really gotten the opportunity to do that much um, until now. Yeah, and then also if you think about it, and not that I want to bring up any anything, but like you think about it, you you graduated in the beginning stages of a pandemic, and then for the last couple of years, it's kind of been a, a blur for us all. So, yeah, we we appreciate you spending that time to reflect on it as well. Stephen, yeah. any last minute thoughts? Oh no, this is good. I learned a lot today, so um, thank you, Jackie. Uh, yeah, and good great. luck on you on whatever you're doing next. Thanks, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll be on the lookout for when we see uh, uh, what if season two and Marvel Zombies, and <laughs> and you know maybe you'll be able to share it in the future on that front. But yeah, thank you once again, everyone tuning in. As a reminder, in case you joined late, this session was recorded. It'll uh, live on in our Center for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion's YouTube page, so we'll be able to share it out. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you at the next one. If you want to join us in December. We have another uh, DI uh, diversity, uh, dialogue diversity design series with uh, graphic design alum, uh, Christopher Gonzalez, who's a designer at Apple. He'll be with us for our December series. So hope to see you at that one. Thanks again, Jackie. Take care. Thanks, Stephen, as always. And uh, good night, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're tuning in. Thanks again, everyone.